Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're playing with some new releases from Dina Wakely 2021 release and we're making some more collage fodder looking at making some art dolls. So what I'm playing with here is a brand new release from Dina Wakely which is her um, canvas backed canvas tape. It's three inch tape and very very sticky back and it's brilliant for doing all sorts of things with. So I've um, done a previous page where I've, a previous project where I've made, the, painted the tape and made it into my book binding, but in this I actually wanted the tape to be the focal part. Now for those people who have followed my pages for a while, know I love making sort of little dolls with abstracty bodies or simple bodies out of um, collage matrixes that I make myself and when I saw this I thought this is a really great idea and it's inspired by some of the lovely people um, like Megan Wisner Quinlan, um, uh, Willow Wen Wendy Wanders, Willow Wanders on Instagram, I can't remember but if you go to Instagram and follow um, 100 days of collage fodder you'll see lots of lots of really great ideas um, to do with collage fodder and this is one where people have been making some art dolls so I decided that I was going to randomly paint my um, canvas tape now I haven't gessoed this um, I'm just painting straight onto it it takes paint beautifully um, it takes water paint down watered down acrylic paints beautifully and um, you can see I'm putting on some quite thick as well um, because it's going into canvas it soaks in quite quickly it takes a little bit longer to dry not that much um, because again you're not putting on all that much paint um, but just be aware I'm working on what we call an Australia Glad Bake it's sil a silicon paper uh, you could certainly just paint straight onto the tape without taking the backing off the reason I've stuck it down onto this was because I can't hold the tape with my hand um, so I found it easier sticking it onto something larger that I could work with. So all I've done is just apply a whole heap of random colours in the background because I love rainbows. And my idea behind this was just put as many marks on as possible. Um, I didn't really have an idea of what I was doing, but I just wanted to explore. Now, um, Ranger very kindly sent me some... Um, stencils to play with. This is not one of the new release stencils however Dina realized that um, people love those trilogy stencils and she has released one in this newest um, release with some different patterns on it. Um, they are so useful so if you can get your hands on it I'd highly recommend them because as you can see on this I've got three different patterns there with one stencil. It's just such a, a brilliant way to work. The next thing I'm doing is adding in some um, random marks with paint pens. So I love using paint pens on top of my um, acrylic paints. One because they draw over them beautifully but just the extra mark making adds to it and you can do as much or as little as you want with this. Um, you can see with the white dots I just use the, the shape of the pen to do that. So just you know if you're great at drawing marks and very confident in it draw your own if you're not so confident either use stamps like I'm doing there or just use the nib of the pen and just use a variety of different sizes the next thing I'm doing is stamping over the top and again I'm using a range of Dina stamps all her different text and mark making stamps in the future and I'm using the archival ink in the background now as I was doing that I liked it but I put too much black on it so I wanted to control what I'd done again which sounds really stupid when you see me putting more marks over the top but by freshening up some of the colors by putting the white over it it pushes that black back into the background and doesn't make it as dominant black is um, really black and white are really really important in your art pieces to balance but you need to make sure the balance is correct so um, you can always add more colours over the top to let the black sort of sink back into the background. Now, when I saw these uh, stencil masks, I knew I wanted to use these. Um, it's a bit of a redactive to help control the chaos somewhat on the page. 
and to make it sort of look more interesting to frame up my images so I'm just using some night paint and gently sponging around um, on three sides then turning over because I knew that my um, cop, my art dolls weren't going to be that big so I could sort of get away and make six, six pieces out of those pieces of tape to be honest I probably should have measured my um, dolls before I cut the tape I didn't I just dove right in and um, did what I do but it all works out in the end so you can see there I'm also using some of the botanical um, masks as well you can use anything on this and obviously you know I, I get the question quite often you know you've you've done all that work in the background why are you then putting paint over the top the reason for it is it um, helps make the marks that you've made in the background the focus so it, those bright colors really stand out but also the great thing about sponging lightly through a mask is a little bit harder to see on screen um, but I can still see those marks un through that night layer. It's very translucent. It's dark enough to give you the effect, but you can still see through it. So you've still got that um, sense of layers and something's happening underneath the surface, which I really love. The final thing that I'm doing is adding in some uh, scribbly lines with my fine white pen and adding in some words which I was being a bit brave with because I am not left-handed I am right-handed but um, I've been practicing painting with my left hand so it's time for me to start practicing writing with my left hand as well so once I've finished you can see me taking a photo here I like to sort of take progress shots as I go along um, just so I've got an idea of what I've done and what I want to do in the future the next thing that I needed to do was to collect some faces. So I'm going through all my Dina stamps that I had to find some images that I could use for some faces. And I know for a fact, again, in this new release, she's got some fabulous faces that would be fantastic for doing this process with. So um, keep a lookout for those. I know they'll be released very soon, so, um, you know, they're awesome I can't wait to add them to my collection however and I know Dina says this too don't forget about your old stuff you know these are beautiful images and just because they're not the latest and greatest doesn't mean they're still not fab and we we can still be using them so don't forget about your your golden oldies in your your boxes so I've just stamped these out onto white card you're going to see me trying to cut out um, these pieces with my right hand. I'm not doing too bad a job, but I've got a feeling that's why my arm is aching today because um, <clears throat> I'm not really supposed to be using scissors with that hand. I'm not supposed to be doing anything with that hand. So quickly chopping out the, the faces. And again, um, this is something I tend to do when I'm not sure. I wasn't sure these were the faces I was going to use on these dolls but I stamped them out and if I don't use them I've got them for another day they're not going to go to waste they are things that I would use anyway so again in my collage photo box I would have alphabet stamped out I would have stamped images cut out and so on so these were the faces I was kind of thinking of to begin with I couldn't find them when I was originally looking for them so I'm going to stamp them out on my leftover cardboard um, I really love these ones and the newest release from Dina I've, there are some similar faces to these on the newest release I really like them because they're just that really scribbly loose sort of abstracty um, face that kind of goes with everything so you can you know paint it up and make it look more realistic or you can make it look really really abstract so once I've finished uh, cutting them out then I'm going to create my bodies so you can see me sort of just trying out the different faces, seeing what I like, what I didn't like. So now I'm going to go in and cut my um, tape. Again, um, my cutting isn't brilliant because of my hand. It would be a lot easier to cut these if you left them on the, t um, the tape backing as well. Um, so again, I took off the, the tape backing just because I was having them scoot around the 
the desk when I was trying to paint them. I found it easier putting it onto the, the silicon paper. Um, <clears throat> but if you're doing this without having cast on, you probably find it a lot easier. The Tim Holtz scissors does cut through the canvas tape beautifully. So you can see me sort of just rounding off the edges somewhat and sticking the faces on the backgrounds. Now these are mostly finished, but they're not 100% finished, but they're finished enough that I can use them, start to think about them in collages that I can put into my future journal pages. So these are gonna sort of sit on next to my desk for a little while until I've got the perfect project to put them with. So here's a close up of the tape. Um, as I was going along. Again, you can see in this close-up, you can see those layers underneath. They're not hidden. Um, they're still there, which is really important, but having the mask around them really frames it up. You can also see how the white, little bit of white pen around it just really makes it pop out. So here's a close-up of the dolls. You can obviously see some of them need a little bit more um, finishing off with a pair of scissors but they're ready to go for a future project and I'll be filming when I use them so you will see how they get used in the long run. So thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in some of the products I talked about, you'll find them in the links in the description box below. Um, please like and subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more stuff coming out, particularly if you're interested in the new Dina Wakely release from February 2021. Until next time, bye for now.